Do you get the little record thing? Mm hmm Okay. All right. It is good to be with everybody today, whether you are here uh, with us in person or maybe you're watching this on YouTube in the future. Uh, we're excited to be with you today. I'm Andrew Jones. I'm the high school science specialist for ISD, and I'm with Leslie Allen and Cynthia Lloyd, our middle school and our elementary STEM specialists. So we are here today to talk one of our favorite topics, which is science fair. Uh, have you ever found yourself uh, as a teacher at educator not knowing what to do with science fair and just thinking this is a huge task. Well, we're here to alleviate your fears today and to provide you some resources to get started. So that is our hope by the end of this time. We hit record. We're already uh, winning. So we're excited to, uh, to move forward with this. Uh, this is our uh, multi-tiered uh, system of framework uh, for the district. This is something, if you've been in our district for any amount of time, you've seen many times, but it's what we always come back to as a district. And uh, if you'll see for this one, standards of instruction is highlighted. When we look at science fair and we look at our science and engineering practices uh, from K through 12, we, we see science fair is just a core way for students to engage in those practices of science. So our standards for instruction is what's highlighted in this uh, short PD. Our learning intentions and success criteria is, again, a piece of teacher clarity that we always remember when we're providing professional development. We're hoping you do the same in the classroom. Our learning intention is I'm learning how to access tools and resources to support a science fair in my school so that my students are able to advance to the district fair. So hopefully you are interested in uh, setting up a science fair at your school within your classroom. Uh, and students will be able to move to the district science fair, which we'll talk about as well. And our success criteria, you will know you've learned it when you can access the science fair manual, a really good resource, and find out about the dates and times of our upcoming district science fair and how to, again, incorporate one within your own uh, school or community. Okay, our agenda is fairly simple. We'll look at the CSD Science Fair website that uh, we've put together where all our resources are housed. We'll look at the Science Fair manual, which talks about different grade levels and how to access um, our elementary science fair and then our secondary science fair. Uh, we'll certainly talk through all the fun science fair paperwork that must be done uh, for a student to advance in science fair. Sometimes we have to do those nitty gritty details we don't like. Very important in uh, science fair and in uh, setting our procedures for our experiment. And then we'll talk about data collection, what that looks like on the student end and how to properly undergo uh, proper data collection for a valid science fair entry. Okay, super. First, we'll start off with our website, which again, everything is here in one central location. I'm going to click on this and I'll actually be taken to our website. So hopefully you are seeing this. This is our Canyons District ISD main page. Uh, you'll have a, a variety of resources here, but I'm simply going to either click on elementary, middle, or high school, and then I'm going to click middle school because it's in the middle, and I'm just going to scroll down here to science. I'll click on that and await our really fast internet here, and we'll go to science fair, and there's a link for you right there to the Canyon School District Science Fair. Notice this is housed uh, by another browser. Uh, Leslie, in a second, we'll talk about Z Fairs a little bit, but this is kind of our front page of everything that you need for uh, the District Science Fair. So with that, I'm going to switch back over here, hopefully, and let Leslie uh, get back to our presentation. Leslie. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. So you saw on our Z Fairs website um, at the top of our Z Fairs main page that we actually have several different 
um, options for um, folks who are accessing science fair. So you can see across the top, we have our general page, our students main page, our teachers main page, and our judges main page. So as you're looking at our website, you're going to want to spend most of your time in our teacher's main page. Um, the resources that we have for you should be fairly explicit. Andrew, Cynthia, and I would be happy to come and meet with you and go over some of these resources in person, or we're always available by phone or email as well. Um, but these manuals or handbooks for Science Fair are really going to be beneficial for you. So we'll go ahead and open um, the elementary science fair handbook here. And this should kind of walk you through the tenets of how to run a science fair in, within your building. The instructional manual here is kind of divided into three different sections. There's a section for you as the science fair leader. There's a section for students and there's a section for parents. So you can see as Andrew's scrolling down, some of these pages are repeated because they're set in these three separate sections. Um, so this opening part is the teacher part. And then we get down to the parent portion. So you can see that there's some information for parents, letting them know that we will be doing science fair, how we're going to be grading science fair. And now we're down to the student portion um, which is a, a more explicit science fair notebook that you can actually print and give to students. So that's how the elementary school manual is set up. The secondary manu manual is a little different in that it's meant to be more um, self-guided. So as students are in fifth and sixth grade, they need a little bit more support and handholding. The secondary um, seventh through 12th grade manual is a little more intense in that it, um, students are to do a little bit more independently. It still is set up in a teacher portion, um, a parent portion, and a student portion. But again, it, it could be that you're allowing your students to go through the student portion independently. Okay. So those handbooks, make sure you take a look at those. Um, one of the most important parts is our suggested timelines. And again, you'll notice um, we have our suggested timelines here for elementary and for secondary. We need to know pretty soon if you're going to host a science fair at your building so that we can start planning on how many students will be able to come to the district science fair. So we're kind of bound by a couple of things. We're bound by room size um, and we're kind of bound by uh, the regional science fair with with how many projects that we are able to send there. So we try to make this process really fair. Um, instead of saying every school can send three or four projects, we try and allow every school to send about 10% of their projects. So if you have a very small fair, you're going to send, um, you know, one or two projects. If you have a really large fair, you'll get to send more. The way that we make those decisions is through that registration that happens in October. So please let us know if you're planning on hosting and how many projects you believe that you'll have. And we'll be able to continue um, working with you as you go throughout this process by sending you some reminders, some updates, and then making sure that we know exactly um, how many students you have so that we can be fair in allowing students to come to the region or to the district fair. Um, the other thing that's important to notice is that um, the fair happens in Jan at the end of January. So your projects need to be completed by your students mid-January, which I know is not an ideal time for kids, especially right after Christmas break. We've had some complaints about that in the past. Um, but our fair has to be um, the last week of January, the first week of February, always in order for us to make the deadlines to register for the regional science fair. So their timeline dictates our timeline, which dictates your school's timeline. So just make sure you communicate that with parents. Okay, and again, the science fair manual setup, we saw that there was a teacher, a parent, and a student section. And again, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments or concerns about um, what you need to do, how to run your fair. We want this to process to be as simple as possible. So 
If that means that you don't want to have judges come to an after school fair and instead you'd like kids to present their science fair projects during class time and you grade them using a rubric, we're fine with that. And then just send your top scores. We want it to be a process that is doable and feasible for schools so that your students can participate. So we'll work with you to figure out what that looks like in your building. All right, let's talk safety. <laughs> there is one really important step that kids need to do before they begin experimenting. I'm going to say that again, before they begin experimenting. We want our kids to stay safe. Um, we've had a few projects in the past that um, weren't weren't really safe for the students. And we want to make sure that our kids, as they are doing experiments, that they don't put themselves in any risk. They don't put your home at any risk. And they don't put other students at any risk. So you'll notice in your timelines, I have links in the elementary version and in the secondary version for the University of Utah Science Fair safety paperwork. That paperwork needs to be completed before you even begin an experiment. If not, their projects will be disqualified from the fair. So they'll kind of propose a project to you. They'll give you a description of what they want to do for their project. And then they'll fill out this paperwork. This paperwork um, ensures, for instance, um, we want our friends to be hopped up on caffeine and then we're going to play video games. Well, hopping up on caffeine probably isn't um, great for all students. So we would want to follow the rules that are outlined in the paperwork by making sure we have parent permission from all of my friends that they're going to drink a lot of caffeine before playing a video game. And we may even need a nurse or a doctor's approval. And the paperwork goes through all of those safety procedures and who you might need to contact for an additional safety piece. Um, so make sure that your students are filling that out. At the end of the day, you're responsible for the safety paperwork. So the kids will fill it out. They'll make sure they get the appropriate signatures. And then you'll have the last official signature on their paperwork. Um, one other important thing to note Kids cannot grow bacteria at home for any reason. So if we grow bacteria at home, mold in our fridge or whatever, we, we typically throw that away. But really, that's not a safe scientific protocol. Um, so if kids are growing bacteria, there needs to be a proper way to dispose of the bacteria um, in a lab setting where they're either using an autoclave or some form of chemical um, to, to kill the bacteria before it goes, goes anywhere else. So bacteria needs to be grown in a lab. You might be able to use a middle school or a high school science classroom as a lab if they have some of those features. And if you need help finding a lab, we're happy to do so, but do not allow students to grow bacteria at home. That's an absolute no-no and the student will be disqualified um, for growing that bacteria at home. All right. Um, another thing to think about as you're doing science fair with your students is to think about projects that are often done by kids and try to stay away from some of those. So things that we see often are brand wars, like which popcorn pops the most kernels and which diaper holds the most liquid. And the other thing we see a lot of are potato batteries or, or um, fruit batteries. And fruit batteries, I'm gonna be honest with you, are fine if you know why that battery works. But if you don't, you probably shouldn't do that project. <laughs> so. Um, have your kids try and think of something that they're interested in and something that's kind of a new idea. Um, those tend to impress the judges more than even a good quality project that, ha that they've seen 15 or 20 times. Um, another issue that we have often with kids is that they don't collect enough data to be able to make a good conclusion. So for instance, they may be asking, um, they may be doing a behavioral science project where they're asking five friends um, to taste foods that are different colors and give it a rating. Um, if you're doing a behavioral science project like that, you can't have a, um, a data source of five. You would need more like 100 people in your study to see um, really good outcomes. We also see kids doing projects like um, I will play music to a plant and I will grow three plants and play music to them and see what happens. One plant dies, two plants are left. There's a half of an inch difference in growth between the two plants. Um, and kids will kind of just say, well, music helped this plant to grow because this one grew a little bit taller. And again, that data set is not large enough to make a conclusion. So when you're thinking about how, how to help kids in their instructional, excuse me, in their experimental design, um, one 
important piece that holds the most weight in the rubric is this experimental design setup. And if they have enough data to actually make a conclusion from that data. So make sure that that's something that you're thinking about and working with kids on um, as you do the science fair. Okay, and Cynthia is going to take it away from here. Hey, thank you, Leslie. So um, ISD will let you know in December how many projects you're able to um, bring to the district fair. And again, it's based on what Leslie said, the formula that she kind of already went over with you. Um, typically, though, it's a good rule of thumb to remember that it's about 10% of your projects. Um, we also will be sending um, a letter to you, the Instructional Supports Department, to give your science fair finalists with information about project registration and due dates. Um, along with this, um, it gives information for what the finalists need to complete and certain deadlines. Um, it's important to note also that late registrations will not be accepted, so please make sure you're following up with your finalists um, and just kind of reminding them of when their date is. And um, it also gives information about how they upload their safety paperwork, um, and it gives a timeline for the day of the district fair also of what they will need to do and the expectations of when they need to have their projects there. Okay, so just as a reminder, um, we do have district fair communication. If you wanna be kept in the loop, which I highly suggest that you do um, regarding the district fair, you can create an account on our science fair website and you will be CC'd on all communications to parents and students. Um, make sure you go to that teacher's main page and then there will be a login um, after you sign up. The sign up is down at the bottom. Thank you, Andrew. And just as a reminder, this is where you're going to be going to our Canyons um, District website. And I've also linked the actual website that you can go to up at the top for your information for that. Okay, so we want to support our students, right? We want to celebrate with them. So um, on the day of the district fair, you're encouraged to attend and Come to the Fair Awards Ceremony. It will be held on February 2nd, 2024 at 6 o'clock p.m. So put it on your calendars now so that you can come and celebrate um, all of our winners that night and all of our participants. Okay, after the district, district fair, um, it's also important to make sure that the students who are advancing to the regional fair are celebrating your building. And some examples of how to do that um, are announcements made on the TVs that are around your building, maybe announcements that are made within your school. And um, if you have those kids in your class, or maybe the teacher that has those kids can do an extra special announcement um, during class time for those students, because we want to celebrate all of the good work that our um, Canyon School District students are doing with science. Okay, if you have further questions, um, Leslie Allen is our teammate who is um, the guru with this, she is the one that's typically in charge. Um, you're welcome to reach out to Andrew and I, and um, we can help you also. But Leslie Allen is the main contact with this, and her information is here. And we look forward to working with you with Science Fair this year. And we hope that um, you'll continue to build the program and get more kids involved in science and in creating and showing their, their skills and engineering and just having fun with science. Okay, thank you for attending our, our Bite Size PD today. And I hope that this helps to um, get some information out to you and um, have resources that you can go back to and look for um, when you need to follow up with information. Thank you.